In the last episode of Soap, Elaine was kidnapped and therefore has disappeared. Eunice and Dutch, in order to disappear from the police, have disappeared to a farm. Bert and Mary still haven't talked, and so their suspicions about each other haven't disappeared. And Chester, who still doesn't know who he is, has just up and disappeared. Confused? You won't be after this week's episode of Soap. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates. And these are the Campbells. And this is Soap. wife don't call police or you'll never see her alive again you will be notified of our plans i can't believe it i just can't believe it. i mean why would anybody want to kidnap elaine the money bert they do it for the money damn it i know that but why us we don't have any money there's only one thing to do well, who are you calling the police no ma we can't call the police didn't you read what the note said do not call the police danny come on what do you expect them to write we've got your wife please call the police <laughs> racket in here do you guys know what time it is chuck there's a reason why we're all up yeah well it's gonna be good <laughs> elaine has been kidnapped and <laughs> and what do you mean and how can you say and Come on. read Hey, Dan, I'm sorry. Listen, why don't I go down and make us all some coffee or something, huh? Good idea, Chuck. Hey, listen, don't worry, Dan. I mean, after a couple of days with Elaine, they'll pay you to take her back. <laughs> Danny, we have got to call the police. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Hello? <laughs> Mr. Lefkowitz, it's Elaine's father. Uh, Mr. Lefkowitz, I'm afraid that uh, I have some very bad news. We have a little... Hmm? <laughs> no, business is good. What? Hey, it couldn't be better. That's all right. I mean, Mr. Lefkowitz. Elaine. That's terrific! Good old Reggie. Reggie? Reggie? Reggie who? He put the Yankees in this series. He made a fortune. <laughs> Mr. Lefkowitz, this is Danny. Mr. Lefkowitz, I have some terrible news. Elaine has been kidnapped. That is the terrible news. <laughs> you know? He knows. The kidnappers called him first. How much? 250,000 bucks! That's almost a quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> what? What do you mean you won't pay it? He won't pay it? But she's your own... No, but Mr. Lefko... No, but... Listen. Listen, you rotten, scum-sucking pig! Oh, I gotta come over there! Listen. <laughs> Why did you do that? Danny, he's a gangster. He could kill you. How are you gonna keep Elaine alive if you're dead? Okay. Okay, but if he doesn't pay, Elaine doesn't stand a chance. Now, where are we gonna get that kind of money? Danny. I have some money put away. It's yours. And I figure we can borrow maybe, what, $25,000? And then we can bargain them down. A couple of hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Danny, no, don't worry about it. Danny, we'll get her back. <laughs> That's our voice, man. That's the one. Right, what did you do with the phone? Here. Look. Here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is him. It's them. Paper. Pencil. Come on. Pencil. 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 Yeah, I got a pencil. <laughs> Go ahead. Boardwalk. I don't want it. 
You're not gonna buy Boardwalk? No. Why? When you put a hotel on it and I land there, I'll have to pay a fortune. No, you won't. I won't charge you. <laughs> Ma, that's against the rules. Mrs. Tate? <laughs> Mrs. Tate, what is going on here? Monopoly. No, 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 that's not what I mean. I'm upstairs cleaning your bathroom and a guy walks out of the shower fully dressed. Oh, that must be Detective Donahue. Well, what is he doing here? Looking for Chester. Well, I think if Mr. Tate was in the shower, we would have found him by now. I'd say it was my most difficult case. First of all, the body was in seven different states. Arm in Alabama, leg in Wisconsin. The head in Rhode Island. Took months to put the pieces together. You put all the pieces together? Sure. This guy's amazing. Not really. It's like a giant jigsaw puzzle. You got a bunch of parts, don't mean anything. Put them together, get a perfect picture. Only difference is the pieces I'm playing with are bloody. <laughs> and the picture I get, don't make Bambi in the end. <laughs> okay, Mrs. Tate, I'm done. Good. Does that mean that you're going to take the case? I'm not sure yet. Oh. I see your husband likes to dress up like a priest. Kinky. <laughs> My husband was a priest. Congratulations on your pregnancy. How did you know? Saltines in the Rocky Road ice cream by your bed. <laughs> Billy, it's a nice collection of magazines you've got hidden in your bedroom. Why don't you get yourself a girlfriend? I'm trying. I'm trying. Try a little harder. <laughs> I see your daughter Eunice ran off with Dutch Lightner, who you hid in the basement. Amazing. Billy, did you tell? No, I swear. Nobody told me anything, Mrs. Tate. Everything is there. All you have to do is look for it. Amazing. Benson, could I get a cup of coffee? No. Good. Makes me jumpy as hell. Now, getting back to your husband's disappearance, I get these cases all the time. Find them all. You name them, I've found them. Amelia Earhart. Found her. Shopping. <laughs> Martin Borman found him too. Sells Mercedes in Malibu. <laughs> I find these cases very boring. I find you very boring. <laughs> if it's so boring, why do you do it? What am I going to do? Heart transplants? It's what I know. Well, they say that you are the best detective in the world. And they're right. <laughs> One thing I had to know, Mrs. Tate, did your husband leave willfully? Because if your husband left willfully, why should I bother to find him? Oh, dear. Do you think that's possible? No. Good. I'll tell you why. I don't think any man in his right mind would leave a wife like you. Oh, <laughs> Detective Donahue, you're very sweet. No, I'm not, Mrs. Tate. Just doing my job. Does that mean you're going to take the case? Only for one reason. What's that? I like your smile. Yes. May I come in? Oh, yes, Mrs. Tate. We're all finished. Oh, good. Doctor, I am so glad that you're a lady gynecologist. It makes it so much easier to come here. So, how is Corinne? Corinne is a fine, healthy, pregnant young lady. I know. But, Doctor, how come I'm so big at three weeks? That doesn't seem normal. Because you miscalculated, Corinne. You're not three weeks pregnant. You're five months pregnant. Uh-oh. <laughs> but that's impossible. I've only been married a month. I understand, Corinne, but nowadays lots of girls have sex while they're engaged. Not if you're engaged to a priest. <laughs> Do you mean to tell me that you and your husband never had sex? Never. Well, then, what about before your husband? When was the last time? Well, that would have been Peter. <laughs> but I'm not exactly sure when that was. Could Peter recall the date? Oh, I don't think so. He's dead. <laughs> My husband killed him. <laughs> but it couldn't have been Peter because he's been dead for over six months. Then there must have been someone between Peter and your husband. There was no one. Think, Corinne. <laughs> Ma, I swear there was no one. There was Peter, and then there was Tim after we were married, but uh, otherwise there was no one. Absolutely no one, I swear it. 
Well, then, I uh, don't know how to explain this. Uh, doctor, perhaps it was from a public bathroom. <laughs> That can't happen, Mrs. Tate. What about a swimming pool? I'm afraid not. Because I saw this cartoon once with a little talking sperm who said he was a terrific swimmer. He was very cute. Really. The little sperm was all light blue and wore swim trunks. And the little eggs were all pink and had little earrings on. I don't imagine that's the way they really look. It's not from a pool, Mrs. Tate. There is really only one way to get pregnant. Well, I'm out of ideas. Good. Now, Corinne, if what you say is true, that there was no one between Peter and Tim, I don't know what to tell you. You have the uterus of a normal five months pregnancy. Is there anything unusual you've noticed lately? Yes, there is. I know this might sound a little strange, but sometimes I hear humming when there's no one else in the room. And it seems to come from my stomach. Oh, that's hunger, Corinne. I get that too, it kind of rumbles. Uh, no, Ma, this is different. This, uh, this isn't a rumbling. This is a tune. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Maybe Bert Backrack is the father. Oh, dear. What is it? Well, I guess this means I have to tell Tim that I'm pregnant. Well, yes. When you go into labor, I think he's going to be suspicious. But I've only been married a month. How could I tell him I'm five months pregnant? Well, oh, Corinne, you'll just have to tell him. I mean, what is he going to say? See ya. <laughs> okay, fellas, let's try and get it this time, okay? Okay, before the milk curdles. All right, tape rolling. Thank you. Quiet, everybody. Here we go, and... Action. Hello, I'm Mr. Peppy Flake. I used to be a schleppy flake. I have to close a curlin' and my peppy eyes are glazing. Cause I got a buddy pal and his name is Rodney Raisin. Hiya, Mr. Peppy Flake. Hiya, Rodney Raisin. <laughs> Am I glad to see you? <laughs> You're splashing in my eye, you jerk. Hey, man, don't be calling me a jerk. Right. <laughs> Fellas, we've been here since 7.30 this morning. How about it, huh? He's splashing in my eye. Hey, you were jumping up and down. I didn't splash on you. Yes, you did. All right, all right, all right. Hold it, hold it. Now, fellas, listen. We're selling happy raisins and peppy flakes here, and it's not playing happy and peppy. Oh, yeah? What's the problem? Seems to be a little too much hate coming through. <laughs> Seems to be dissipating the happy and the peppy. You know what I'm saying? Let's roll tape, please. Now, remember to tap Rodney on the head after you finish the song. He can't hear you underneath all that milk, okay? Mm -hmm. And now give me a little happy peppy bouncing up and down. That's it, good, use it, hmm? Rodney, under the milk, please. Here we go. Don't forget to tap. <laughs> Don't forget not to splash. <laughs> okay, action. Hello, I'm Mr. Peppy Flake. I used to be a Slappy Flake. You gonna pay attention here? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Stop tape, please. Listen, Carol, I'm really sorry. I didn't get a chance to call you. This has taken a lot longer than I thought, and I'm gonna have to work right through lunch. Jody, I think the, uh, I think we should call off the wedding. Well, I should be through by then. 
<laughs> Who's gonna come? Oh, Elaine has been kidnapped and Bert and Danny are out looking for her and Eunice has run off with Dutch and Chester is missing and Jessica is worried sick and your mother is miserable over Bert's affair. It's gonna be you and me and Bernstein, the caterer. Hi, Mr. Bernstein! <laughs> I'm gonna kill you! I'm gonna kill you! No, Pat, Rodney, Rodney, what's the problem? He didn't tap me. Now look, man, I'm not a mackerel, I'm a razor. So either you hire a flipper or get me an aqua lung. Pace, calm down. Everything will be okay. I need this. I have a hostile raisin here. Now listen, Carol, I know there are a lot of problems, but everybody wants us to go through with it. It'll make them happy, and they need to feel a little happy these days. Uh, you, remember us? Yeah, fellas, listen, I'm very sorry about that. You sorry? I've been in this milk for four hours. I'm starting to wrinkle. <laughs> Terrific. A good raisin's supposed to be wrinkled. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, well, let's roll tape, please. Let's get it this time, huh? All right, now listen, trust me, everything's gonna be okay. All right, let's get it, DJ, huh, please? Thank you. Quiet, everybody. Rodney, under the milk, please. <laughs> Action. Hello, I'm Mr. Peppy Flake. I used to be a slappy flake. Hold it. Wait, don't anyone move. What's the trouble now? I lost the contact. <laughs> Wait, now I got it. I didn't just say it. All right, steady. Why are you, Mr. Pappy Flake? Now you're gonna die! Why? 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 just what the cereal needed. Fruit. <laughs> Carol. Da, 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 da. Well, what a surprise. Uh, Dennis, what are you doing here? Jody, I've been wanting to talk to you, but you never return my phone calls. Get the hint? Look, I... Coffee, just... huh? How about a nice hot cup of coffee? Huh? Jody. I can't let you just walk out of my life. <laughs> Dennis, I'm marrying Carol. Jody, I've thought it over. I'll give up football. <laughs> I'll come out. I'll do anything. I'll tell the world I'm gay. I think you just did. <laughs> now, can we turn that off, please? Thank you. <laughs> Dennis, it's the way it is. I'm marrying Carol. But I thought if I give up football, I mean, we wouldn't have to sneak around anymore. Dennis, it we won't could... make any difference. That's the way it is. We're finished. Finished? Finished. Finished. Sounds so final. <laughs> okay, Jody. I'm sorry, and I won't bother you again. Are you sure you want to go through with the wedding? Absolutely, you. Mm hmm. <laughs> This is very touching. Sick, but touching. Uh, fellas, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's get back to work, okay? Hey, and Jody, is it really over between you and Dennis? Yeah. Then you don't mind if I give him a call, do you? Where are the cops? They're around. They're here. Don't look, don't look. <laughs> Where are they? I don't see any cops. Danny, please. They're not going to wear their uniforms. They're in disguise. Oh! Don't look! <laughs> Where? Where what? Where are they? In their disguises. There's one right over there. Where? Don't look! <laughs> There's no cop over there. There's just an old lady over there, and she's feeding the pigeons. Don't look! 
That's the cop. It's undercover. You saw it on Beretta. Oh, no. <laughs> are you sure we're in the right place? Yeah, I'm sure. They said the phone booth by the elm tree. The cops still there? I don't think that old lady's a cop. Why not? She just mugged somebody. Maybe the victim's the cop. Maybe. Maybe. Come on, where's that call? Danny, listen, Danny, I've been thinking. I've been thinking that maybe I should talk to the kidnappers when they call, and not you, because you're getting too emotional. I am not. Danny, you should walk. I am not. Walk. Hey, listen, it's my wife. Right, listen, yeah, come over here. Just that. Listen, now, I need you. Calm okay. down. Okay. Listen, please. Just pay attention. Hear the sound of my voice. It's important. I'm going crazy, Bert. That ringing is driving me nuts. <laughs> Oh. 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 All right. All right, we're in the phone booth near the elm tree, just like you said. But we don't have the money. Be nice. Apologize for not having it. Okay, okay. Look, I just can't raise that kind of money. Listen, listen, you lousy creep. If I get my hands on... Hello. Hi, <laughs> right, this is Bert Campbell. That's uh, Danny's stepfather. Yes. Oh, listen, we are. We just, he's a little overwrought. You gotta forgive him. And now, we don't have $250,000. Come up with it. What do you want me to do, rob a bank? Yes, he says yes. I got a comic over here. Listen, you lousy Peter of filth. Have you touched her? Hello. <laughs> Sir? Yes, please. Uh, I'm sorry, we can't come up with $250,000, but we do have $25,000. Uh, when you're finished laughing, sir, maybe we can do a little business here. <laughs> All right, this is Danny. Now listen, guys like me are real suckers paying blood money to vermin like you. If none of us ever paid, you'd be out of business. So my only and final offer is $50,000. Take it or leave it. And if I ever get my hands on you, I'm going to rip your heart out. Oh, good. That's great. Ripping hearts. That'll warm them up. Baby. I used to work with criminals. I know how to talk to them. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, we'll be there. A and we're going to want to talk to Elaine before we pay anything. Hey, that was incredible, Danny. Well, that was strong, forceful. And stupid. Where are we going to get 50,000 bucks? I don't know. It's going to be a little tough to raise. <laughs> it's going to be even tougher for men here. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Danny, use your head. The phone. Oh, you got some money? Sure. Break a five. How will Bert and Danny find $50,000? And will they find $50,000 if they can't find their way out of the telephone booth? And if they can't find their way out of the telephone booth and find $50,000, how will they ever find Elaine? What will Tim do when he finds out what Corinne found out, that she is five months pregnant? Since they've only been married a month, will he find that difficult to believe? Now that Dennis has found out Jody intends to marry Carol, will Jody find he has second thoughts? Will Detective Donahue find Chester? Does he want to find Chester? These questions and many others will be answered on the next episode of Soap. Soap is videotaped before a studio audience. 